right, here at Blue Glow Electronics, we're going to do a uh, second video on this little Harman Kardon 330C. Yesterday we made a video where basically the customer had sent me this unit, sent me a little video of the unit uh, kind of making crackling noises while playing. He said it didn't do it all the time. It kind of came and went, and it certainly didn't do it when you first started playing it. And I played this thing for about nine hours yesterday and never got it to reproduce that sound. So... I just made a video on how to bench test uh, one of these units instead while I'm still trying to find the issue. So I posted this video yesterday and uh, you know a bunch of my loyal viewers here posted some questions and uh, interestingly one of them down here from Sergio, he basically said, hey this unit probably has two SC458 transistors, they can make that noise, you can replace them with da 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 da. And I said, hey, I've ran into that a lot in Morant's uh, pre and phono boards, uh, but even after eight hours now, no sign of it. But you're right. I said it may be worth replacing them just for kind of a safe mind. And so he said he had had similar experience here. And thus. So I did my tried and trusty uh, go to um, Google and typed in uh, Harman Kardon 330C 2SC458 and hit enter. And up popped a. Uh, an article on recapping and restoring a Harman Kardon 330C on uh, Audio Karma, probably one of my favorite um, audio boards out here. But he goes through and he, this guy talks specifically about uh, the transistors you need to replace and the electrolytics you need to replace. And he's even shown the each circuit board and kind of highlighted here. You can see Q101, Q102 here. Um, you know, each board tells you what you need to replace from a cap and a transistor standpoint. And he goes, uh, you know, he talks about the two known noisy transistors and what this should be replaced. It's the 2SC1344s and 2SC458s. Um, and as you can see, both of these uh, kind of sub out to the uh, 512 KSC1845 FTAs, which are a Fairchild transistor that, uh, that I have bought quite a few of over time. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive into this thing and actually uh, replace these transistors. I talked to the customer a little bit yesterday about this, and uh, that's the route he, he felt comfortable with as well. What I'll do is I'll if I can't get it to replicate uh, before replacing these things, I'll replace them all. Uh, kind of charging for the service, but I'll give him a warranty that uh, that far exceeds my normal warranty. In case it comes back, we can chase it down somewhere else. So stay tuned. We're going to jump over to the bench. Okay, kind of right back where we were yesterday. I'm going to get the screws off and the cover off of this thing. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and take off the bottom plate as well. Okay, once you get the uh, you know, two screws on each side here, and the two on the top, the top cover comes right off. You can flip this thing upside down. Um, you've got eight, nine screws here that hold this thing in. Uh, some of these here are inside of holes. You don't have to take those out. It's these two in each corner, and then this one right here. One thing I like about these little Harman Kardon units is once you got the bottom off, you can get to all the boards real easily. The power supply board and all four of these boards. Um, unlike a lot of the Morant units where these boards are kind of recessed or you got them double stacked one on top of each other, uh, Sensui's notorious for that as well. Uh, these little Harman Kar Kardons are just a, uh, they're a joy to work on to be honest. Okay, so what we're chasing here are the 2SC1344s and 2SC458s and then the replacement we're going to use are these 512 KSC 1845 FTAs, uh, which by the way replace uh, several transistors in, in quite a few different um, units. Some of the Pioneer units will have transistors that these will replace, as well as um, many of the Moranch units. So it's a good idea if you're into restoring these units to keep these on, on hand. Um, I usually buy them in a pack like this, a hundred at a time from Mauser. Um, they're you know they're not insanely expensive um and so we got to chase these things down and you might wonder well how do i go about that well, i'll use kind of two or three things here to do that first and foremost and you you really need a flashlight uh second up if you're got my age on you you may need a magnifying glass and then the third thing i've got here is just a silver metallic sharpie uh, it's just kind of a felt tip that when you uh, put it on puts a sil little silver metallic spot 
and I'll show you why I use that. So this is a little board on the side of this thing and what I do is you know you basically use a magnifying glass all these chips that we're talking about will have these little chiseled edges uh, and, uh, in the little case and what I do is I just go through and I read um, kind of using a magnifying glass and a flashlight on each side and go through and find them and then when I do find one you can see right here I use this little silver metallic pen to just come along and kind of color the top of that thing silver and I found two on this board, one here and one here. And on the front kind of EQ board here, there are four. Um, and they're right down in here, one, two, three, four, about midway in this board here, right in front of the uh, air variable capacitor right here. Found all four of those. Uh, this board here doesn't have any on it, the middle board. And then this uh, kind of the driver preamp board here will have two on it. One right here and one right here. As you can see, I've colored the silver top on. So now it's just a matter of uh, getting those things out and uh, replacing them. Some of those uh, in here are the 2SC um, 1344s and some of them are the uh, 458s. Okay, before you go actually unsoldering and replacing anything, I highly recommend uh, when replacing transistors in any piece of gear that you go pull up the data sheet for the original transistors you're about to replace. So the 2SC1344, if you'll notice you got the flat part here and basically it goes one emitter collector base. So if you were looking at this thing from the very front, it would go emitter collector base is the pinout for this thing. And then if you look up the 2SC 458s that we're replacing here, um, you would notice the same thing. They go number one emitter collector base, which uh, is good that it's consistent with the 1344s. And then you're going to want to look up the KSC 1845s. Uh, these are the Fairchild uh, replacements that we're using. And if we look here then, we've got one um, emitter collector Base. So the good news is these are going to have the same pinouts um, when we go to replace them as the original transistors. Um, this KSC1845 will also sub for a 2SC1313 that gets used in some Sensui units. And um, those are actually just the opposite. They go um, base collector emitter instead of emitter collector base. So you end up having to basically put these little packages in backwards if you're uh, repairing a Sensui unit that has 2SC 1313s in it that, uh, and you're using these KSC 1845s to replace those. So it is always prudent to uh, double check your uh, pinouts in your data sheet. You just type in like 2SC 1344 space data sheet in Google, hit enter, and it'll bring you to pages like this that'll uh, that'll kind of walk you through figuring out the exact pinouts. Okay, on this little uh, Phono uh, pre-driver board here, you can't get to the bottom of it because of this metal plate. So you have to remove these four screws, and then this board will just kind of lay over to the side, and you can get to it to desolder on the other side. Okay, the next thing I do is I find the little transistor like this one I'm going to replace. And I notice the face of it is pointed in this direction. I'll always come on the other side of that thing and put a little dot. And I notice on this one the face is placed pointing this way. I just put a little dot on the board. It helps me remember which way they kind of came and went. Because once you unsolder that thing, I do not always trust the markings on the boards here. Uh, a lot of uh, circuit boards are labeled wrong, so I'd rather know I'm putting something back in the way I took it out. Okay, there's a couple different ways you could unsolder these things. One, you could use a soldering iron and just a uh, you know a solder sucking tool such as this one um, to kind of get the solder off of these things. I bought or I got a new little uh, present here for Christmas, a Heiko FR300 which is just a marvelous little tool here for uh, basically you hold it down on the spot, get all the uh, solder, and then you hit the vacuum pump on this thing. And it'll suck all the solder right off of there. And uh, then it's just a matter of coming around and kind of these leads are all bent over. It's a matter of just bending them straight up 
um, just like that. And once you get them kind of bent up, whoops, then it's just a matter of uh, you know grabbing a pair of pliers on the other side and kind of working this thing until it until it comes out. You can see here I I removed one on the other side um, right over here. You can see the three holes here that I uh, soldered sucked and uh, pulled it out on that side. So this thing makes life really really great. Okay, these little transistors come on a strip that are uh, kind of glued on. And you can easily use a uh, hot air gun. I'm just using a uh, SMD rework tool here. Uh, it's nothing but a little hot fan that blows out um, hot air. But if you get these things hot enough, then you can just pull, pull you a couple of these things out really easily like this. As you can see here, they just kind of fall right out. Otherwise, you risk bending the leads all up. Uh, this is basically a heat activated tape here. And I buy a lot of capacitors in bulk uh, like this as well. And I end up stripping them myself. But you see how easy that is. Okay, you're going to take your 2SC 450, I mean, uh, 1845, and you're going to bend the middle lead back just a hair because all these will kind of go, um, you know, emitter, collector, base here. And the collector is always pushed back just a little bit as they go to be inserted into the sockets. As you can see here, I've got this one inserted in at this point. I do not have it soldered, but um, the dot was on that side, so I've got the fat, uh, the flat side of this transistor going on that side. Um, I push it on down just a little bit. You can see the, the little leads come through on the other side. Now it's a matter of just, uh, I use some fairly fine solder here for this. It's, uh, this is 6337, and it's uh, 0.32 diameter here, pretty small stuff. But we'll just uh, touch those up um, using the uh, Heiko F888D soldering iron. And keep in mind, you did um, kind of remove all the solder from that landing pad. So you not only need to replace the solder around the, the lead you're connecting now, but you also need to replace the solder around any other leads that may have been part of that same pad. Uh, when you did the uh, use the solder sucker, and so uh, all three of those are soldered well at this point. Uh, just one little spot there I want to touch up. There we go. Now it's just a matter of uh, coming along with a pair of wire snips and uh, kind of snipping the leads off close to the solder down here. All three of those. There we go. And we have replaced that transistor at this point in time. I'm not going to walk you through all eight of them, but you kind of get the idea, and uh, we'll just go through. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to replace these two, and then I'm going to power the unit back up and play it. Because um, I want to make sure everything is working at that point. What you would not want to do is replace all eight of these units um, across the entire, um, all these boards and then find out, oh wow, it doesn't play now, or I've got uh, smoke coming from something, or whatnot. And then you're having to trace down which one of these caused the issue. At least, uh, if you kind of do each board at a time, then you'll know at least to go back to that board and chase down your issue. Okay, we just tested out both the aux and the phono inputs here. As you can see, beautiful sine wave. If I turn the dummy load on the speaker, on both sides things sound good. Um, it's just making sure things are good going good board by board as I move through this. So that board's done. Now we're going to go hit the the, um, the kind of the driver board here for the output transistors and then we'll come up here and kind of hit the EQ pre-board. Okay we've now replaced the two on this board and uh, same thing I've hooked the unit back up. Uh, both channels good clean sine wave just making sure everything's working. Um, before kind of jumping on to the uh, to the next to the next board here. Okay, these next ones are where I'm going to earn my money. <laughs> it's a tight little space in here. You can see about the length of uh, one segment of my finger there. And if I zoom down in here far enough, you can see that there are four of these. Um, well, you actually can't see that. If I turn this a little bit, there you go. 
you can see all four of them right there. The two on the left are pointed inward to each other so the two dots are in the middle and the two on the right are kind of pointed away from each other so the dots are on the outside. Um, good news is it'll be easy to get to the other side of the board but uh, kind of getting these things out will be a little bit of a pain down in here. Okay, you can see all these came out. Um, right here's one, two, three holes. One, two, three. Um, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we got all four of those out. Uh, it was really easy to get to the bottoms of these things uh, with the desoldering pump here. And just kind of uh, desolder each one of them. Um, you know, break the leads loose a little bit if need to be, and then uh, pull them out from the other side. Okay, we got all the uh, transistors in there. And um, but before I uh, wrap this thing up, what I want to do is rebias the outputs. Anytime I change resistors, capacitors, transistors in the output driver stages, I definitely want to rebias this thing. And if you if you look here, it says your power amplifier idling adjustment. Um, so you're basically setting your uh, you know your idle current on the outputs here. And it basically says set the function, and this is in the service manual for Harman Kardon 330C on page 4, which you can Google and find. It says set function selector to aux, set volume control to minimum, tone balance controls to mid, set stereo mono to stereo, speaker switch to on, and connect an 8 ohm 50 watt resistor across the left and right speaker terminals. At that point, you're going to adjust R428 and R427. I'm sorry, you're going to measure across R428 and R427, and you're going to adjust VR402 and VR401 for 10 millivolts, plus or minus 1 millivolt, um, measuring across those things. So let's, let's go do that. Okay, I've got the unit up here, and if you look here at this back little section where the, uh, against the driver power transistors, this right here is VR, I mean uh, R427. And right beside of it would be um, VR401. And then this is VR, I mean, uh, R428. And this would be VR402 right here. So basically, you're going to put a, um, a digital multimeter across these two leads right here. And you're going to set the multimeter on volts DC. And you're going to measure, um, turn it on like it said, let it, let it warm up for just a, sec a minute. And then um, you're going to adjust this potentiometer to get point zero one mill or ten millivolts across this thing, um, and then the same for this one over here. Okay, as you can see here, I've connected across both sides of this resistor, and what I'm trying to get here is um, ten millivolts. Right now, we're sitting at one point six, one point seven millivolts. So we're just going to adjust this little potentiometer. And I might be going the wrong way. Oop. And the minus sign doesn't really matter. It just means I've got the uh, the leads on this thing a little backwards. This thing's tough. It's about as good as I'm going to get it right there. Ten point. Um, I might can tweak it just a hair. And I'm going the wrong way. These things are finicky. Okay. We're going to leave, ooh. you got to love when you remove your little tool here. At, right in there, 10.04. That's close enough for what we're doing here. I'm going to move over and do the other one, and we'll have the bias set on this thing. And as you can see here, we got the other side right there at it, uh, right at the 10.0 uh, mark. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Let's see how this thing sounds. Okay, I'm basically going back through the same set of tests I did yesterday using the, uh, you know, the function generator and the 8903, um, etc. But uh, so far I'm happy with how this thing's uh, specced out and turning out. Pretty sure that this will solve any of the noise issues that this thing was having and uh, get this thing back to a happy customer.